What's up, Digital Business Evolution? Welcome back to the show. Today we have a spicy one, and I'm very excited. I'm actually gonna break this one into two parts, so make sure you come back for part two. Trust me, you're gonna wanna hear it. I recently put a post up on Instagram, and it got a lot of buzz. There was a lot of conversation happening, and I had this feeling, I think maybe I wanna make an episode on it, and I kinda wanna talk about it on the podcast, but I wasn't 100% sure. And then about 20 minutes ago, I got home from lunch with a girlfriend and this exact conversation came up and we were talking about it at lunch and I said, all right, universe, I hear you, I see you. And so we are diving in. These are eight key indicators that you should run the other way. That was sort of the headline on my Instagram post. In fact, I have it here. And I said, eight key indicators that you should run the other way. Tactics that are tarnishing the industry draining people's banks, bank accounts and leaving people feeling defeated, taken advantage of and afraid to trust again. And I went in and I started to talk about the eight key indicators that I see. You can consider these things like red flags or things that I see as a problem, problematic in the coaching industry and in the digital marketing and education industry. Now, let me just give you a disclaimer. I am in no way bashing other people. I will never talk about other people and I am not turning down or turning my nose up to other ways of doing business. In fact, part of the reason why I wanna talk about this is because that's part of the problem. We should not be bashing other ways of doing business in order to make sales in our business, right? Like tearing people down for marketing is not a very good strategy, okay? What I am doing here is I am bringing light to the conversation that needs to be had. I am pointing things out that I've been seeing in the industry in the recent years that I just don't like, all right? And it's not that I don't like it, they're just, it's not right. A lot of this stuff is unethical. So if you didn't know, I got into the online coaching industry in 2012. That was 11 years ago. I am a grandma in this industry and I have been doing digital marketing, digital education and content creation for 11 years consistently. And I've seen a lot of things change. I've seen a lot of trends change. I've seen platforms come and go. Your girl used to do lives on Periscope back in the day. You probably don't even know what Periscope is if you're listening to this right now. It was another app that was a big deal for a short amount of time, right? So I've seen a lot of things come and go. What I'm noticing more and more and more and more and more over the last decade, specifically over the last three to five years, is a lot of these things are coming up and people are sort of taking advantage of other people on the internet, especially post-pandemic. So during the pandemic, of course, it's no surprise, a lot of people were forced to move into the online space which was a great thing for a lot of people to have that option. And while that happened, a lot of people started to take advantage of other people and some of those unfortunate things have stuck around. So without further ado, I'm gonna get into it. There are eight key indicators here that I have come up with. I'm gonna give you the first four on this episode and I'm gonna break down another four on the second part of this. So the first thing that I'm seeing that I just don't like is this idea of over-promising and then under-delivering. So we always say all the time, Let's talk about the coaching industry. There are a lot of great coaches who are not great marketers, okay? And I would actually bracket myself in there. So I'm a great coach, I'm a great teacher, I love being on stage, I love frameworks, I'm so good at coaching people back and forth, doing the thing, having the conversation. But marketing, sales, marketing, and copy, and messaging have been something I've been working my butt off on for a decade. I was awful at sales a decade ago, thanks to getting involved in network marketing and cold calling literally hundreds of people trying to sell them things and not being very good at it, I started to get better at sales. So I am one of those people who naturally, innately, my default is I'm a good coach, but I am not a great marketer, okay? And that's where a lot of us actually fall. The service providers, the thought leaders, the coaches, the nutritionists, the trainers, the doctors, the real estate agents, like we're really good at helping people do our thing and our craft, but maybe we're not great at the business side of things or the marketing side of things. Duh, you're just not, we're not all good at everything, right? But you can learn that and you can practice it. And so we have a lot of great coaches who are not great marketers. Now on the flip side, unfortunately, we have a lot of great marketers, great storytellers, great at messaging, all of those things. And then they're not actually the best coaches. They don't deliver the best curriculum or courses, or they don't even know how to write a curriculum. They sort of hodgepodge things together. And so what I've seen over the last couple of years, specifically the last three years, is that more and more people on the internet, and you've experienced this, 
They're over promising what they're going to do for you. They're over promising what they're going to give you. They're over promising what you're going to get out of it. And then once you're inside and you've paid them, they're under delivering. Now, this is where so many people have gone into programs or courses or whatever it might be. And they don't feel seen. They don't feel heard. They don't feel taken care of. They feel like a number. It's like, they're just, okay, cool. You took my money and ran. And so people are not treating other people like people. And this is a problem. So that's not even my opinion. It's a problem. People aren't treating other people like people. And that is a problem. They're treating them like cash, like a bank account. Thank you for the transaction. Moving on with my day. And I have been hearing more and more over the past couple of years, experiences, awful stories from clients coming in and telling me that awful things that have happened. So we really need to do better. Let's under promise and over deliver surprise and delight under promise and over deliver. Now, of course you want to get clear across what it is that you do, who you help and how you help them, but making false claims and promising people the world just to get them to pay you and to get in them in the door is awful under promise and over deliver. There are so many things that we do inside of our programs that our clients have no idea that we were going to do. And it's such a sweet surprise. And like I say all the time, expectations equal experience. So if you set the expectation bar really high and then they come into your world and you're barely delivering on the bare minimum, their experience is not going to be great. Now, not only is it a problem that people aren't treating people like people, but the problem here for you, the business owner is that when you do something like that, I assure you that person is not going to come back and become a loyal customer. And if you know anything about economics and business and sales, the easiest sale to make is to a is to a past client, is to a past purchaser. It is easier to sell someone who's already purchased from you than it is to find someone cold out in the audience somewhere and convert them for the first time. So when you're doing things like this over promise and under deliver, you're actually decreasing your lifetime customer value. In addition to decreasing your lifetime customer value, how long they might stick around, you're also decreasing and shooting yourself in the foot for how many referrals that person might give, if they would ever shout you out, if they would ever bring other people into the program, you're probably not going to get a testimonial. So this is a far larger problem than just an unhappy customer, right? Okay. Number two, this one really gets me. I need you to stick with me on this one. Cause it's kind of like, it's a little meta. It's like, you know, the, the Russian doll, like inside the other one, inside the other one, inside the other one. So just stick with me here. There are so many people in the industry right now in, in digital marketing and education and coaching and, and content creation saying that they won't use pain point marketing and that you should work with them because they don't use pain point marketing and that pain point marketing is dead and that people who use pain point marketing are bad and coaches who use pain point marketing are, are bad or whatever that would be. And the irony is that they're literally using pain point marketing, AKA they're shining a light on one of your pain points to market you. And so here's the thing with marketing. And I, I wish I pulled it up, but I didn't, I don't think I had it up. Marketing in itself is pain point marketing. Like that's just what it is. If you watch a TV commercial, you have a rash, take this pill, right? Here's this cream. You need a car to get to work because you don't have one. That's your pain. Go buy this car. You can't find a loved, you don't have a loved one. You're not in a, in a relationship with someone. Use this app, right? You don't feel like you're fully worthy and you just want to fit in. That is a pain point. Buy this clothing. This handbag will make you feel like you fit in. This thing will make you feel worthy. These shoes, right? All marketing is pain point marketing. And the reason that all marketing is pain point marketing is that because 80 to 90, this is a stat, Science proves that 80 to 90% of the time we move away from pain. It's only about 10% of the time do humans move towards pleasure. When we're in enough pain, we make the decision to move. And I've shared this story so many times. I'm going to share it real quick. There's that fable, if you will, that story of the man who sits on his porch with his dog. I picture him a golden retriever, an old, old golden retriever. And then there's this other guy, this man, this neighbor in his suit and tie. And every day he walks by the man on the porch and he's on his way to work. And every day he walks by the man on the porch, the man's dog, the golden retriever is just moaning and groaning. And he seems like he's in pain. And every day the man in the suit says, sir, is your dog okay? And he says, yes, he's fine. 
And one day, the man in the suit walks by and he says, sir, I'm so sorry, what is wrong with your dog? He seems like he's in so much pain. He's always moaning and groaning. And the guy says, the old man says, oh, he's fine. He's just laying on top of a nail. And so the man in the suit said, well, then why doesn't he get up? And the old man in the rocking chair said, because it doesn't hurt enough. That's what we do, humans. We don't move until it hurts enough. We stay in the relationship until it gets to a point where it's just enough is enough. We stay at the job that we don't like until we get to the point where it blows up. We do the thing until we get to the point where we're so disgusted with ourselves. We sit on the couch until, we eat the food until, we miss the gym until. That's what we do. We wait until a point that it gets so uncomfortable that we finally make a move. 80 to 90% of the time. So marketing is literally this whole industry of shining a light and showcasing somebody's pain. It's not about pouring salt in the wound. It's not about making someone feel worse or disempowering this person. It's going, hey, this is something that you're struggling with. And oh, look over here, we have a solution. So the irony of the whole thing saying I don't teach pain point marketing or in my side of the internet or in my world, like I, re I don't do pain point marketing. What you're doing is you're showcasing to someone that if you don't want to do pain point marketing because you think it's bad or wrong or sleazy or masculine or whatever you think that it is, you're now leaning into that person's pain of them not wanting to do that. Specifically, if they've tried it before and it quote unquote didn't work for them, really because they just didn't do it long enough, they didn't put in enough consistent time and work. And so you're saying, I don't do pain point marketing, come work with me. You're literally leaning on a pain and then you're selling to the person. So anyway, that happens a lot in the industry. That's also happening a lot with sales calls. People are anti-sales calls. Coaches are saying that over in my neck of the woods, we don't do sales pages, we don't do sales calls, uh, launches are dead, evergreen funnels don't work, ads are dead, and what they're doing is they're leaning on pain that people have had because they maybe have tried those things before and it didn't work, or they're simply scared of those things and don't know how to start or where to start or how to try those things, and so they're roping them in based on their pain. So that's gotta stop. Number three, these are not in any order by the way, this is a massive umbrella that if I had to take everything I'm talking about and put it under one umbrella, this would actually be it. And that is predatory marketing. So predatory marketing is manipulating your audience to feel a certain way to take a certain action. This comes up a lot of times when people think of certain events or cult-like events where, or cult-like rooms, they are sort of, um, they'll break you down emotionally to get you to a place where you're super vulnerable and then almost insert a new belief. After inserting the new belief, they'll then sort of raise you back up, get you back into peak state, make you feel really, really good. And then they'll do the pitch, right? And they'll like, okay, take, here's the credit card. I'm going to get that solution for you. The way that it's happening right now in the coaching industry that I'm seeing happen a lot is sort of the, this message around um, number one, false promises, which is just crazy. Number two is straight up lies. Like people are selling the cart before the horse, which happens to be one of the things as well. So it's saying that I've done something that I haven't actually done, or I've, I'm able to help you with this thing that I've never actually done before. The false promises kind of goes in with that over delivering and then, or over promising and under delivering. But I wrote something down that I want to read. Um, this was a direct quote taken somewhere on somewhere on the internet. It says, my clients know how to lead themselves to an investment. They don't need sales calls. They don't need more information. They don't need a detailed sales page because they're embodied and they know how to trust their intuition. And then I just wrote blah, 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 blah. Okay. This is extremely disempowering. This is predatory marketing. You're telling a person that if they need more details, they're not ready. You're saying if you need a sales call, you're not ready to invest in yourself. You're saying if you're unsure about the investment, then you're... You don't know how to lead yourself. You don't know how to use your intuition yet. This is extremely dangerous and manipulative and it's gotta stop. There's a lot of predatory marketing. The irony here too is that a lot of people wanna help a lot of people. And when you do something like this, not only are you not helping a lot of people, you are, you are literally like shutting out and discriminating entire groups of people. One of the things that I teach inside of all of our free content, actually, Digital Business Evolution Live, I teach it for free. There are 10 different types of, of learners and buyers, 
Not everybody learns the same way. Not everybody buys the same way. So when you approach marketing from a lens like this, you are literally discriminating against entire groups, huge groups of people that buy slower, that need details to buy. They're not emotional buyers. Maybe they're super strategic. They're logical. They have spouses and partners that they want to talk to. They have business owners. We have business owners that we work with whose companies have invested in them to join our programs. And they needed to bring that back to their company to get that yes or to get that stipend. So by you saying stuff like this, you're just like cutting those people out. You're not even giving them an opportunity. So like I said, it's just not inclusive to all different types of learners. It's not inclusive to all different types of buyers. And it definitely does not make people feel safe, seen, heard, or cared about. So I really do deeply believe as a whole, like this idea, this, this predatory marketing that's going on, it is ruining the industry because people are ending up in rooms that they don't belong in. They're sort of blindly taking out credit cards. I've had so many conversations with people where they literally have said like, I don't know what happened. All of a sudden I just paid. Like all of a sudden I was enrolled. I didn't even get anything out of the first program I took with this person, but then I like somehow I just bought the second program or I felt backed into a corner or they were telling me that like the only way to get to the next level was to do this thing. And even though I didn't have any money for it, they were telling me to do things like take out another credit card or, you know, do all these crazy things with my money. And so people are so eager to find an answer and people are in so much pain looking for a solution at wit's end that they'll end up doing things that they don't necessarily feel aligned doing. And then they sort of wake up and they realize what has happened. And it's just unfortunately happening more and more. The fourth one that I want to go to is where I started today. And that was people tearing other people down or other business models down in an effort to raise their own up. This goes back to crabs in a bucket. So if you didn't know, if you put a bunch of crabs in a bucket and one crab, they all like try to climb to the top of the bucket. If a crab is able to get to the top or like step on the other crabs to reach the top, it's actually in nature that the other crabs will go and pull that crab down. It's sort of like misery loves company and they don't want that other crab to escape. Now, I don't know the exact reason as to why, what the breakdown is, if there's fear, if it's misery loves company, if it's jealousy, like I don't know what the emotion of the crab is, but that is what happens when you put a bunch of crabs in a bucket. If someone climbs to the top and is about to get out, the other ones will jump and pull and claw to get that crab back down. That's the equivalent to what people are doing here. You do not need to step on people or claw your way to the top. And I know you don't need, I don't need to tell you this, but this is what's going on. So people are using what they don't like, what they disagree with and what their business model is the opposite of to tear down and to be anti vanilla. And I've talked about this before. There's a difference between being polarizing, having an opinion, busting myths, bringing up conversations that are difficult to have like I am today. And then there's ripping people apart and tearing people down. There's a difference between being anti vanilla, tearing people down and being pro chocolate. So what I'd rather see is you being pro chocolate. What do you do? What, who do you help? How do you, what do you stand for? What do you not stand for? Be pro chocolate. It's got to stop in the industry. All of it, the, the pulling people down, the finger pointing, the, the launches are dead. The evergreens don't work. The funnels are no longer the, this, the, that, the other, all of that finger pointing is simply not true. I'm in my third year of my mastermind with my mentor. I've had mentors since 2014. That's nine years. And I'm in my third year with my current mentor. And in this room we have people doing 1 million up to as of last year, up to 5 million in revenue for their businesses. Okay. Pretty, pretty cool. Pretty solid. All of the people in the room have been doing those numbers consistently year after year after year for many, many, many years. They all have teams, they all have strategies, they all have structure, they all have beautiful holistic freedom as we call it. What's really crazy is that there are people in that mastermind that sell only low ticket. I'm talking $37 a month memberships. There are people in that room who sell only high ticket, 10, 15,000, $5,000 programs. There are people in there who only run ads. They have no organic marketing whatsoever. There are people in there who do only organic marketing. There are people in there who do live launches, who do evergreen funnels, who do website stuff, who do sales calls, who do applications and who don't do all of those things. And I can go on and on and on. 
And my point is that all of their businesses are running, all of their businesses are thriving, and all of our businesses are successful. And so you simply cannot say that one way doesn't work. There are so many different ways that you can run a business. There are so many different ways that you can have success. But I'll tell you right now that ripping other people's ways down in an effort to raise your way up is just not sustainable, not sustainable. So these are my first four sort of red flags or key indicators that you should go the other way. And I'm not just talking about when you're looking to make an investment. In my personal opinion, I wouldn't even be following pages like this. I don't find them to be insightful. I don't find them to be helpful. I even feel as a consumer who's not interested in buying products and programs from this person or these companies, I feel disempowered and icky when I even read the content. So full permission from me, Jess Glazer DeRose, you are absolutely allowed to mute people. You're absolutely, absolutely allowed to unfollow people. You're allowed to change your mind. You're allowed to change your mind about people. It's absolutely okay. All right. So in the next episode, in part two, I'm going to share four more of the key indicators that I'm seeing just things. Again, I've been in this industry 11 years. I am not new to this. I've been full-time in this industry for six years. We have a team. We've had thousands of clients who've been around the block and this stuff has just gotten worse over the last few years. Now, the good news is I am seeing the pendulum swing back to a more integral, uh, like playing, playing ground, playground, which is what we want. If you're listening to this or watching this, I know you are absolutely in no way a part of this because you wouldn't be listening to my podcast if you were like attracts like, but I just want to put it out there because so many people do listen to my podcast that are brand new to this industry. They're brand new to this business. They're brand new to this idea of content creation. And they're always asking me, clients are always asking me, what should I look out for? What should I be aware of? How do I not get scammed? I don't want that to happen to me too. So that's honestly the only reason why I'm putting this out here that, and because Golly, it struck up a lot of conversation on the internet. So as always, cheers to your evolution and make sure you don't miss part two. If you love this, if you thought it was spicy, if you've got things to say, if you want to tell me some takeaways, go ahead, take a screenshot, share it out on social media, tag me at I am Jessica DeRose. I would love to hear from you. And I am 100% open to mature conversations in the DMs. If you disagree with me and you want to have a conversation in the DMs, absolutely. I am not here for trolls or arguments or nastiness but you wouldn't do that. So I shouldn't even have to say that. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you loved this episode, I invite you to be a part of our ripple effect and share it with a friend. And please, if you feel called, take 30 seconds to leave a five-star review and I'll be forever grateful. Until next time, cheers to your evolution.